safety, Marwin Evans. Marwin's going to recap the Boise game and how the defense played, and then we'll take some questions. Go ahead, Marwin. All right, I feel like, feel like we played really good this past Friday. I uh, did really good on stopping the run. That was our main goal for – that was our main goal every week, is stopping the run, being real good in the front seven, and just doing our job in the back seven. So then we did good, especially on making a lot of turnovers, making them uh, turn over the ball and doing that. Right there. Well, you had the most memorable turnover right in the game. <laughs> I seen the ball, I was like, I seen him overthrow it, and I just seen it, it just came to me, so I just caught it, and I was like, I'm just going to try to score. So I just t took it down to the the sideline and got some good blocks from uh, Jalen, our corner, and uh, Jordan Nielsen, and Torrey Green, so which helped me return it. So. Did you see the clock at all? No, I didn't see the clock at all. I mean, it's just kind of the lock off. Yeah, I didn't. Wrong way. I, I knew it was like 12 seconds on the clock, so I knew it was like the last play anyway, so. Yeah, we watched it. Watched it yesterday, so yeah, watched that. What's the feeling like to take on like ninety yards? What is that? What, are your, what, are, what does it feel like, or what does it feel like? It's tiring, <laughs> but it feels good. It felt unreal, though. After the game, I was like, I really just took a ninety-yard interception back. So, yeah, it felt unreal. So, was there something different about the week's preparation? It was a little different than all the other weeks. Did what? Kind of no, nah, we we uh, we prepare, prepare the same every week. We just our main goal is we, every week we go in. We like we're gonna stop the run, and that's what we did. So I want to say we prepared the same every week, just like it was a regular opponent, just another opponent. Now you were involved in the run, the fumble play too. Remember, tell us about that play or how that happened. Well, I seen what well, they call a blitz. I'm coming down and I seen like the tackle pull so. I just run hill line and I seen the, uh, the running back right there and I made the tackle. Well, he, he was a pretty good shot. He was down. He, <laughs> he was down and grimacing at me yeah. too. Yeah. So how do you feel personally? I mean, that was one of the concerns heading into the season was the you know, safety situation. I feel good. I feel like the safeties. I feel like we're coming a long way, especially after losing Frankie and Brian Sweet. I feel like we're stepping up, helping out the team a lot. Yeah, we play in a three-man rotation because uh, a lot to do with that is me and Devin are on special teams, like a lot of the special teams, so we get tired. So to keep us fresh, we all rotate, do a three-man rotation. That was such a nice read for you guys, you know, stopping Larry Nelson. I mean, how do you, how do you avoid letting that linger too long uh, going into the stadium of San Diego State? Well, we know San Diego State is an, uh, another good opponent, so our coaches say the 24-hour rule, so – we live with it, we live it up for like 24 hours, then put it be behind us. Just worry about the next opponent. Did you, I mean, do you, as it was going, did you feel it was as great as all of us who watched for years and been around here? Could you feel that as this game was going on? Yeah, I felt it. Because the last home game we lost was against Boise State two years ago. So I really felt that. So I felt like it was a good thing. And after losing to them last year, how we did, I felt like we bounced back really good. Just a little bit. Watch their game against San Jose. I seen it on TV just a little bit, but didn't get to really watch too much of it. I mean, it's a, a really another really good running team. Yeah, really good in the run team. So main focus again for this week would be stopping the run. Yeah, Humphrey is obviously uh, the strength of their team. His ability to run the ball. I mean, how much comfort does your guys' ability to stop the run give you heading into this game? Well, we go in there with confidence that we're going to stop and run, and make try to make teams one dimensional. And then that make it make the the play calling and just the gameplay a lot easier for us, especially in the back end, so we know what's coming. Yeah, I was uh I was calling my mom to see where she was at after the game to try to take a picture with her because she came in town to watch me play. So, and then they came up and uh, interviewed me, and I was on the phone. So. <laughs> had she watched other games before? Yeah, on TV, but this is her first time coming to town. Yeah. <laughs> She's been to the greatest game in the history of the yeah. stadium. So I know she is excited to see the the crowd go, uh, see the crowd go wild like that, and especially with the fans rushing the field. So.
that was a good feeling to have her there. I'm pretty sure she did. <laughs> Anything else for Marwin? Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have senior wide receiver Hunter Sharp. Hunter will recap the Boise game and how he thought the offense played, and then we'll take some questions. Uh, I really thought the offense played well, you know. I'm used to our defense just, like, carrying the team. And it was really, really good to just be able to uh, to play off their energy, you know, and uh, capitalize on all the turnovers they were creating. And, um, I mean, I just – it's so special to just be a part of, like, a big win like that. And uh, our offense was firing on all cylinders. We were able to run the ball and pass the ball, I mean – very efficiently, and uh, I feel like that was a great win for the Aggies. Yeah. I mean, to, to have you set up, but then offensively you've scored touchdowns after all those fields. That, that, that's where this team's improved these last couple of weeks, is scoring touchdowns, getting good chances. Talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> yeah, the coach always talks about it. Coach Wells always says, you know, uh, we have to capitalize on their mistakes, and, uh, you know, like we have to live up to a certain percentage, and we emphasize that. During the week of practice, you know, we work on red zone stuff and and third downs and stuff like that just for situations like that so we can go into the game and just it can be easy, you know, as easy as practice is. And, uh, I mean, like in the game, it, it, it felt like practice. It felt like, you know, all the situations we, we work on in practice, it just were, they just, I don't know, it helped us be able to, be keep our composure in those situations because that's the biggest part of that is just keep our composure and just be able to um, stay calm and and keep pushing forward and the, after those turnovers and stuff and I, I believe we did that well. Now, the two touchdown passes. I mean, your quarterback couldn't have thrown the ball better on either one of those throws to you, right? Right. I mean, uh, they were just perfect <laughs> spots. Right. Perfect. For you to make the catches. Yeah. Can you talk about what Kent's done lately? Um, and Kent's been balling lately. And, uh, you know, the off season, Coach Hypo coming in, he really, really worked with all the quarterbacks really well. I honestly think that uh, I thought he was ready from the beginning. And, uh, you know, we always talk about stuff like that, and we always put in extra work, you know. Coach Wells has us the days before the game throwing a couple extra passes after practice. Sometimes we do it on our own. and. It's just all about trust, and I just think, you know, the kids put in the work, and it's his time to shine, and I'm always there. I don't mind catching the ball. <laughs> Hunter, we, um, we chatted on Wednesday about you um, being able to go, out, go against um, Dion and uh, talk to some guys that you grew up uh, not very far away from. Uh, I saw Dion was in coverage on that first touchdown. Uh, just how, how, how gratifying was it to score a couple of touchdowns against uh, that secondary? Ah, uh, man, it was very gratifying. You know, um, the coaches, well, myself, I know, you know, those guys have a lot of interceptions in their careers, and I know they probably have NFL careers coming after college. So uh, it was just a big test this week to see if our whole offense could, you know, have success against their defense. But, I mean, being able to score touchdowns against those guys, it was like one of the best feelings. You know, it's like, kind of like a feeling of remorse, like I feel like I can kind of breathe now. You know, I, I wasn't nervous, but I was I was very anxious to see if uh, all the hard work would lead to, you know, success. And it did, man. Kent really helped me out. You know, he put the ball in the right spot. He kind of made it easy for me. Did you shake their hands? Did you talk to them after the game? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Are you guys good friends, or what would you say, or just know each other? Oh, yeah. I, I know Darian Thompson a little better, so um, I hugged him after the game. He just recently had a, a daughter as well. So uh, I just told him congratulations, and I told him good luck to the rest of the season and probably see him around Christmas time or after the bowl game. And I shook Dante's hand and uh, and just told him, you know, man, see you in the future. I hope to see you in the future. I mean, that's possible. Hunter, how do you end up at Utah State? Every guy has a little bit different recruiting story. What was yours? Um, well, I didn't 
get an offer out of high school, I was ineligible. And um, in junior college, uh, the first year I didn't get any offers. In the second year, I managed uh, to meet Coach Weber. He came to the school one week and uh, took a picture with me, told me I wasn't as as tall as I looked on film, but I, I tried to stand on my tippy toes. And uh, and he told me he liked my film, and from there we just started the recruiting process. And uh, I came on a visit. I only went on two visits. <coughs> I just narrowed it down to two. And um, after a talk with Coach Wells, I honestly decided to commit because I felt like this was the best decision for my future. What was the other? Uh, the other offer was Kansas. Yeah. And no, no offense to those guys, but the Aggies were very successful at the time. So I just wanted to be a part of something like that. The first couple of visits, what was it? I imagine frustration is the word. So what, what was the frustrating part of that, having to watch the first two games? <sighs> uh, just having to constantly think about the wrong decisions that I made and I don't know, seeing plays made that I felt like I could have made or I don't know, it was just, it was disgusting feeling. But um, I just know I'd never want to feel that feeling again. It was, it was horrible. Hunter, what makes, what do you think was your best trait as a receiver? What do you think you do the best? Um. I feel like I I get in and, out, in and out of my breaks pretty fast, and I feel like that allows the quarterback to to get the ball out faster and using my speed, basically. I mean, I feel like I have pretty good hands, too, and focus on the ball, and I try to catch every ball I can. I try not to let the ball hit the ground. That's, like, something that I really don't like and my coach really doesn't like. And I try to just like have a well-rounded, you know, talent, but I feel like my speed is probably the biggest part of my game. That helps it. And then this week, you talked about Boise State's secondary. I mean, if there's a, another good second, I mean, ours, I think, was good too, but San Diego State's is known as a pretty good secondary too, going against them. What does that mean, or what, how do you feel about that? Um, I feel the same way I go into the, the week the same way, you know, um, and individual drills will we'll break down their film and, and and work on the things that we think will work against them and and just take the small things into consideration and go into the game playing full speed and fast and I feel like there shouldn't be a difference in the execution part of the game. Thank you. Boise State win, and then preview San Diego State. How y'all doing? doing? I'm going to be ready to roll. I'm not going to touch that mic this week. <laughs> <laughs> I almost I did, dude. It's good luck. Um, well, that um, was a performance that um, we're all very, very proud of. Um, a lot of um, credit goes all the way around. First of all, it starts with the players. I thought they prepared themselves very, very well. Uh, I thought they practiced um, really good at the end of the, at the beginning of the week, I should say. Um, and I thought our uh, coaches, um, 
both coordinators, all three coordinators, um, and our assistants had these guys ready to play mentally. Uh, we asked them to trust us to have them ready to play physically on the short week, coming off um, you know um, a road trip, getting back really really late, jumping right back into it on Sunday, um, and uh, you know coming off a big road win at Fresno and then having to emotionally do it all again. We asked them to trust us, and, and I think our coaches got them ready, and I thought that they did a nice job themselves getting themselves ready to play. And, um, just the um, – obviously the outcome was was um, a very positive thing for all of us. So um, hats off to our coaches, but especially those players, and I thought it was um, you know, it was a performance that we'll all remember around here for a long, long time. Um, again, I said it after the game. The atmosphere was off the charts. It was electric. Um, honestly, we had to do two different things with the headsets because I couldn't hear. And I mean, I mean that. I mean, it was loud. And there is a legit home field advantage in Maverick Stadium that I want our students and I want our fans to completely realize um, that it has an effect on in the game and players and uh, feed off that energy. And it was tremendous. It was awesome. Uh, the best I've ever been a part of here at Utah State. And uh, there's a reason that we play well at home, and a lot of it has to do with the fans. Um, so, again, I thought that was a big, big part of the game. Um, so that's that. Um, and I just walked in. I heard one of the players say it. Um, it really is. We we did. We celebrated Friday night and all day Saturday because I um, – I want those players to. I want those coaches to. And we do this too hard and too long um, throughout the year for not very many opportunities. And um, when you win a game like that, you need to celebrate. Um, but when we walked in on Sunday, it was, you know, we watched the tape and we put it to bed. And it's over. Um, and I really mean that. And it's easy to do that, especially when you flip on the tape with San Diego State. It's a team coming, you know, three straight wins. Um, they have a lot of confidence. They are extremely physical. Um, that's what they brand themselves to be, and that's what they are. Um, it's a staff that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Um, they will be ready to play. There's no question about it. Um, they'll be up. It's a short week for them, not for us. We have to travel. So, you know, whatever. Maybe all that's a wash. I don't know. doesn't really matter, but it'll be a um, – It'll be a really good game. I mean, you got both both leaders in both divisions, three and zero, um, and here we go. So um, we'll uh, we'll have to play very very well to to be uh, to be competitive and to be in that game on Friday night. And hopefully, I uh, we trust our preparation throughout the week, and our guys will practice well, and and uh, then that in turn will mean they'll play well on Friday night. So I'm looking forward to a um, a really really good game against San Diego State. So with that, I'll go ahead and open it up. So what did you do to celebrate? It actually shut off Friday night. I didn't even realize it. Um, after I got done with Craig and the radio, I went and checked it. Yeah, there was a lot. That's that's part of it, um, you know. But, you know, well, part of the celebration on Saturday was – coming right back into the office and grading it and starting to look at San Diego State. And then when I quit, I got tired of looking at them because they were, they're really good. Um, we, you know, just family time and a few coaches and we had a good time. So we celebrated it and woke up on Sunday and it was over. So, you know, fans can celebrate. Coaches' families and coaches' wives can celebrate for a long time. But, you know, the players got to move on. Coaches got to move on. So... Oh, well, it's to me, it's not about, yeah, it's first of all, very, very well deserved by Cutter Fackrell. He had an outstanding performance um, on a big stage um, against a legit team and a legit program, and uh, to me, continues to send his stock uh, out of the roof. But, you know, our, our defensive staff, as well as myself, I mean, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, 
who's going to be the player of the game, you know, internally, who's going to be our player of the game, who's going to be our champion. And, I mean, the efforts really by about four individuals. I mean, Marwin Evans, heck of a game, heck of a game, a lot of big tackles, you know, obviously the pick six. Uh, Jalen Davis, double-digit tackles for a corner. Are you kidding me? Um, you know, PBU, um, pick, fumble, which is why he didn't get it. Um, and, um, you know, and then, and then Nick. And Nick had an unbelievable game as well. So I thought we had four guys worthy of that honor for the conference. Um, you know, and four guys worthy of that honor just internally, you know, just in our team meeting room. Four great performances. You, um, I mean, the first couple of games, it just didn't seem like the turnovers would come. And, you know, we all anticipated it would because these guys have produced them. Is, it, is there extra work they really have to do to make it happen? Or is a lot of it just more and more knowing or no. more and more if you If you go back and look at the transcript of the press conference after three weeks, I'm almost, I, I, I said it during bye week. It was right after Washington, and every one of you guys around the table wanted to know why we hadn't created any turnovers. And I said, don't be alarmed. We are coaching it. Uh, we're practicing it. As long as we continue to do those things and as long as we continue to run to the football in the manner that we're running to the football, they're going to come now. They've come in the last three weeks. And um, obviously they came a lot um, Friday night. And um, I don't believe that, that any of that's luck. I think luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And I think our defenders have prepared um, all through spring, all through training camp, even in season on a weekly, on a daily basis. I, see, I mean, we are ripping, um, ripping, stripping, um, forcing the tournament, learning how to recover turnovers. Um, our D-line does it. Our corners do it. Our safeties do it. I hear our DB coaches all the time saying to those guys, they get one shot. When you get in the open field, you get one shot to punch or to rip and strip. You don't, you don't get multiple rips and multiple hacks. It's one shot, and it's either a ball out or not. And um, they focus on that. Our guys do it. They do a turnover circuit, and we do it full speed. And um, you, that's got to be part of it. And the second part of it is you got to play – relentless defense and put a bunch of hats in the video is what you know our guys say our coaches say which is when you turn on the video there's a lot of Utah State helmets if you freeze the frame around the football you can count a lot of helmets that means you're running relentlessly to the football and as long as you're doing that which is what we preach and what our players do then when those balls come out you obviously it's a numbers game you have a lot better chance of of getting those and I mean you can see guys I mean look at the last one that we that we stripped and there's Kyler Fackrell, you know, on um, the the pass down the field, the long pass down the field. There's Kyler Fackrell running. I don't know how far. He's the one that recovered it, you know. And then you got Jordan Nielsen, who's like the old you know little kids game, you know, Hungry Hippo. Y'all ever seen Hungry Hippo? That little the game where you, that's Jordan Nielsen. I mean, you can see there's a ball down the ground and there's O line, D line, and everywhere. And then all of a sudden, out of the video comes a big old long arm. I mean, that's, you know, that, that is what it is. And, and he's always around the ball. Why? Effort. And um, we preach it, we coach it, but it's, and it's ingrained in those players. And so my hats are off to, you know, credit goes to those players. Yeah. Steve, I think the thing that he the best thing that Hunter Sharp does is he makes competitive catches. And that is a tremendous quality for a wide receiver. When you got guys draped all over you or hanging on you or holding you or there's tight coverage, um, competitive catches and, and um you know, competitive catches are also to me down in distance and situational. You know, when the you know when it's um uh, you know, it's a critical moment of a game. And I can name three right off the top of my head um, from Friday night. One was the, the first touchdown catch was third and 11, you know, in tight coverage against an all-Mountain West corner. Um, the next one was obviously into double coverage, 
on the corner route in the in the south that southeast corner of the end zone. Okay, and then the third one was one that y'all don't even know about, but it's unbelievable to me as on a um, sprint out on a on a sprint or a boot, and he's he's on a stop route and the corner's tight and the ball's thrown and he out wrestles the guy. The guys, you know, right on him. It's great coverage. Um, he just makes competitive catches. He's got strong hands. He's got strong forearms, and he can high point a football. But the bottom line is all that into one is he can make competitive catches. He's big time impressive. When all you have to do is flip the tape on, and Munson and Feely to me are the um, the heart and soul of that defense. Those guys have played a lot of games for Coach Long. You know, I know how they're getting coached. Um, they're getting coached very aggressively. You know, the linebacker coach Zach Arnett, he was our starting linebacker at New Mexico um, seven or eight or however many years ago. You know, I coached him on kickoff return. He that guy was, you know, he's an undersized linebacker all mountain west you know and 510 511 or whatever zach is don't let him lie to you but that guy is a competitor and i know he's coaching them that way i know he's coaching them um but those guys to me are awesome awesome players a lot of respect for them a um, lot of respect for them um, the way they pressure the way they blitz you don't see them make missed tackles they can cover um, backs and space um they're really, really good players. Yeah, how impressive has their defense been in Mountain West Conference? Very good. Yeah. yeah, very good. You know, you look, and it's not surprising. I mean, just, just look at the amount of starts and the amount of games played. I mean, four of their five uh, defensive backs that they play with have played 18, 19 or more. They've got several guys in the 30s of games played. You know, two of their D linemen, both their backers. I mean, they are a very, very experienced defense, which to me is a great quality to have in a Rocky Long defense because um, I know how he coaches those guys. You know, he'll pull a call out from four years ago that they were all freshmen and they all remember, you know. And uh, anytime you get experienced defenders that I know are smart, the way, you know, I already mentioned Zach Arnett, Danny uh, Gonzalez, Tony White, and Osei Lewis – how they coach that defense. I know all four of those guys. I've worked with them. And, um, you know, they, they're, that's an experienced defensive staff. They've been with Coach Long for a long time. They know his system inside and out. And you look at whatever, eight out of those 11 defenders that have played that many games, they're a year and a half starters or, or greater um, into three year starters. That allows Coach Long to be um, a lot more multiple, a lot more unpredictable. And, um, which I think makes him a lot more effective. Has he always called defenses like he does now? Yeah. Always. Yeah, he's got a great feel for it. And is it there? I mean, you look at numbers and you look at players and things like that. Would would you say that their defense plays like your defense plays, or you want your? Um, play? Yeah, I mean, I think they're very. Um, I think they're two similar defenses in terms of tough guys of terms of stopping the run first, of getting a lot of hats to the box, uh, trying to outnumber offenses in the run game. And um, they're trying to stop the run just like we are. And I think they're, I think we're both very similar in that. We're both um, very aggressive and very multiple on defense, going from even front to odd front to man pressure to zone pressure. They're very, very similar. And um, so there's a lot of similarities between both defenses. Um, probably not arguably. I don't know how many people's going to argue with that. He is really good. Um, you know, we have not played San Diego State um, yet, obviously, but we have seen them on cross tape quite a bit in the last couple years. And so as an offensive staff, and I'm obviously in the offensive room most of the time, I've seen Pumphrey and I'm going to tell you what, the other two backs, this may be the best – room in the in the Mountain West I mean one two and three um, know a lot about Penny tried to recruit him um, great kickoff returner a great skill set catches the ball in the backfield I think he's the fourth leading receiver if I'm not mistaken 
um, maybe fifth. Um, but, I mean, he's the third on the paper, third running back, and and they're using him quite a bit. I think that's a really deep room. It's it's a effective. It's They're talented, but um, 19 makes them go. 19 is a stud. Um, you know, I know he's a tough guy if he's playing for Rocky Long. He's a stud. Then if you need, if you already know the policy, then what's well, the okay? Is the, que the question would be is Wall out for the year? No. Okay. I'm, I don't mean to make light. No. But no. No. You're good. Nope. He's not. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Anyone else for Coach Wells? We're good.